many years have you been taking snuff? Ever since I was 16. Why do you take it? Because it's good for the eyesight. You think it's a good habit, do you? Yes, for the eyesight. I went to him blind once. And I couldn't see my mother and nobody, and I got home the best way I could from Mill. And after that, mother said, you stop on the sofa and I'll get you something that will bring your eyesight back. I never believed her. Well, she went off, of course, being 16, I kicked up a fuss about it. The next morning I was at work. How much snuff do you take in a week? Well, Jared and I takes about an ounce, or ounce and a quarter. Do you always carry this with you? Oh, yes. I don't to go away to cake it. Yes, I take it everywhere. And it's it's a habit you'd recommend, would you? It is a habit that I recommend. People reckon it's a dirty habit, but you can be clean with anything. I don't believe in dirty habits. Ten no more than smoking fags. Nar so much, but I don't believe in smoking fags. That's right. <laughs> Mr Juggins, I believe you take snuff. Well, I really do now, and tell you, Mrs. Turner, I've always found myself in jolly good health. And as soon as you've got a cold and come in, if you take plenty of snuff in a decent way, you'll find yourself more healthier than those who do not take snuff. Because, Mrs. Turner, now you understand that snuff is made from the pure tobacco plant. And they just say that smoking cigarettes, you know, Mrs. Turner, they cause cancers. But smoking do not cause cancers. Because older you get or younger, you always got some ailments in your inside which we do not know nothing at all about. But I always found out my own self that if you take snuff, I know it is awful price, but I have took snuff ever since I married Dorcas, and that's uh, and that's 45 years come this August. Now you understand, it don't matter where you are, Mrs. Turner, I'm speaking to you now, and you're speaking to me. It don't matter if you're inside or outside, there is a surging germ going about the air. You understand that? Well, you're bound to breathe that German into you, no matter if you're inside or, or outside. But if you've got something behind you to give you more spirit and give you more kick, and just put my ideas up if I was you and get and take snuff yourself, Mrs. Turner, you'll find it a lot better off. They always overlooks me when they be dishing out honours. Yet if ever a bloke deserved to have the letters O.M. after his name, that bloke be me. Of course, for me, they would have a special meaning, standing not for the order of merit, but for us, mucker. Ah, and in me time, I'd have took some whacking. Because the streets and roads in Winchcombe used to be nicely dappled with arse manure, and me and our les used to go to work with truck and shovel, working at the highway harvest until all was safely gathered in. And most times, mind you, we got our truck full up and nicely slapped down with the back of the shovel. But there was times when you'd have thought as all the asses in the place was constipated, because we had go for miles and get only half a load. Well, you had to be go out in the field of a morning my father used to call me early, perhaps half past four. You had to get up and go out into the field with a pair of clappers, slap them together to frighten the rooks off the corn. Well, we used to start then, and, and sometimes you had to bite there till the rooks was going back at night. It was six months a day then. When I started in court into Dorcas, I was 16 years of age. I and Dorcas went down to Stroud on the well car, and I bought some ice creams. Apney each, then, they was. I started court in Dorcas about 16 when I went out long way to Dorcas. Oh, I look smashed. I had a beautiful photo, and, and they all said I am altered. At all. 
Well, Doris, she looked, she looked more nice than what she's doing now, you know. Because I would have done more hard work than what I ever had. Isn't that right, Doris? I used to push my mother-in-law about in the bath chairs in Chopford. I used to call it the Express. Well, we'd get this Express, right, and we had one bus between two. When it was my turn to take a ride, I'd go about one mile and a half out, then wait for Dorcas to come with Express again, then she'd jump on the bike and take another ride, you see. Well, the wheel came off once. I went into Offords. And I and I got the spindle and and Jim put it back. I went in the office and got the spindle. And the spindle came off the wheel, see? What was the name of that fat policeman, Dorcas? Bagger Jones, wasn't it? I don't know what his name was. Bagger Jones, he was ever so nice. He turned round and older. And I run after the wheel and brought the wheel up again and had the wheel put on. And in Dorcas joined me for that, didn't you? Oh, I joined if I want to. And she said, it was me. Then when we had it on, we was coming round up by the four clocks. This is a beautiful interesting. The Salvation Army was there. And the old lady, we used to push the Emily chair right into the Salvation Army ring. And she wanted to hear the ring. That was in the w w winter time. We found people going into that empire in the day days. And there was a going in, and the Soviet Army was outside. And we left Strode then, about half past seven, wasn't it? And it was dark nights coming along the road, and we had flashlights. And... Uh, the old lady slept in the chair. Of course, the Dorcas wouldn't told the policeman off. Her was the one who didn't tell any on him off. He wanted to try and take the summons on me because I rode the basket chair and the bike without a oil light all the way up through the stroke. But Dorcas told him off, didn't you, Dorcas? Well, what anybody off? My God. My wife would tell anybody off. It don't matter if it's the king on his throne. She said, George, you take this from me, that we all came into the world and we was all made the same way and we all got to go down in underneath and speak your mind where you be on boat because she reckoned our soap to watch far better than the soft soap. She said, have you got anything to say to a person? Say it in front of her face, not behind her backs.'"